Hello and welcome to another week of the AFCB TV preview show. Now before we start, you may have noticed that we're not wearing Christmas jumpers. You guys had your say on Twitter and voted 51% that it was too early to wear them. But nevertheless, both myself and Matchday commentator Chris Temple will give you everything that's been going on in the last week. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 2-1 defeat to Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be discussing Jefferson Lerma and the impact he's had since joining in the summer. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium. But first things first, let's go back a week and look at that 2-1 defeat to Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. Here are the short highlights. Wobi, halfway inside the Cherries half, Kolasinac, left-hand side, drives it across low, and own goal! Put into the back of his own net by Jefferson Lerma, who scored in the right goal last time out and has put one in the wrong net this time. From hero to zero for Jefferson, half an hour gone, Arsenal in front. Well, you can see what he's trying to do, he's trying to get back and help his defenders, and he's running at pace, tries to stretch, just deflects it into his own net, unfortunately. Nothing the goalkeeper could do. They can praise a break away now, five on three in Arsenal's favour. Wilson over on the left-hand side, Fraser desperately trying to join him down the left side, King, Brooks is there as well, here's Brooks, they could work this well for King, King right-hand side, left foot in! Yes! Joshua King! Pulls Bournemouth level, right at the end of the first half! Once again we see Bournemouth sweep from one end of the pitch to the other, the timing of the pass from Brooks was perfect, and the pace and precision of the finish from King was spot on, 1-1. Well, what a finish that was, what a break that was. Raise it to start with, make great ground. Callum does extremely well here to slow it down, wait for the reinforcements. And it's a ball about Brooksy putting right pace on the ball so King Yee can smash it into the top corner. Here's a Wobie, lovely ball played inside left, onside. Kolasinac is cross, and a Bamiyang this time makes no mistake. Arsenal sprouted that from next to nothing. And as the ball was slid across by Kolasinac, Aubameyang found the net for the eighth time in the Premier League this season. And with a quarter of this game remaining, Bournemouth will have to come from behind again. Bournemouth 1, Arsenal 2. Well, there we go. A goal from Joshua King on the stroke of half-time wasn't enough for the Cherries to get all three points against Arsenal here at Vitality Stadium. If you do want to watch the extended highlights or the full 90 minutes, they are available for free on AFCB TV. Chris, it was, a, it was a tough day at the office again, wasn't it? It was, but again, the small margins. And I think against the big teams, you feel the small margins more when they, they fall against you. I mean, the David Brooks goal, I have to say it took two or three replays for the TV company to get it in the right line to show that it should have been allowed. The first look looked like it, it should have been offside and, and was rightly flagged, but uh, that that's pretty early on. So if that, if that is allowed as it should have been, uh, that can be a different complexion on the afternoon. And then, of course, having got back in the game with that brilliant goal, fantastic breakaway goal. What a finish from Joshua King. You know, first time inside of his wrong boot. Um, absolutely smashed it. He did say actually he'd been he'd been uh, had a bit of a knock on his right his right ankle, so he had been practicing his uh, his left footed strikes, and that came into fruition in the game. Uh, so having just got yourself back into the game on the stroke of half time, then you come out in the second half. You need to try and sort of carry that momentum on and and sort of kick Arsenal while they're down slightly, but they weren't able to do that unfortunately. Um, and the yeah the winning goal was was disappointing in nature. It was a bit too easy, switched off from the free kick. Um, and you know when you you have those moments against the big teams, they do punish you. They're there was a little flurry late on, of course. You know, Jefferson Lerma hit the post. Um, a couple of other chances. Leno scooped that one out from when it was looping into the corner as well. So, yeah, that just fell the wrong side of the small margins. A bit like Manchester United, you know, the last-minute winner and other great chances that uh, Bournemouth had that they should have taken. So, unlike Newcastle, where it was just a disappointing performance, um, I think it's certainly hard to be taken from the performance, but feeling the weight of those things that can just fall either way, unfortunately, fell the wrong side. And you mentioned that David Brook chance there. If that goes in, it's a completely different game, isn't it? Well, and it was a, it was a, you know, it wasn't the, the prettiest goal Bournemouth will score this year because it was a bit scrappy and it got stuck under his feet. But it was a smart finish under the keeper. And yeah, er, that early in the game against the big teams, it sets the tone, doesn't it? Um, but as you say, the linesman, you know, up went the flag uh, incorrectly. Maybe not the only decision that went against Bournemouth or has gone against Bournemouth in the, the last couple of weeks. But that's the uh, sometimes when the the tide has just turned slightly against you. The winning run is, is over and uh, whatever, then those little 50-50s start falling the wrong way, unfortunately. And obviously last season we went 1-0 down to Arsenal here as well. This time we did the same, we came back 1-1 and again, 
it, people were probably thinking, well, here we go again. And particularly with Arsenal's uh, propensity to not be able to hang on to leads in the first half, or they hadn't been ahead at half time in any game this season, and they were 30 seconds from being ahead this time. So that would have, uh, I guess, they would have, they were arguing amongst themselves as they walked off at half time about that. So yeah, at half time, it looked like that Bournemouth could go on and, and make it count in early in the second half. But you know, let's not forget Arsenal, a great side with with multi million pound players in there. So to to be sort of standing here disappointed again, a bit like Manchester United. The context is disappointed not to have got something against two of the biggest teams in world football. So that is the the bigger picture, I guess. Albeit when you lost three in a row, it probably doesn't feel like that. But you know, that that's the the reality is that the performances probably tell a different story. Not Newcastle, but the other two tell a different story to the amount of points that have been uh, that have been gained. And Arsenal, obviously, they were on such a good run coming into the game and Unai Emery has made them look like a different team, hasn't he? Yeah, they've, they've been strong, absolutely. Um, they're looking, you know, it's a tough task for them at the minute to hang on to the to the, the real top guns. You know, City and Liverpool at the top have, have uh, sort of set a different standard this season. But Arsenal, you know, they're in the, the Tottenham, Man United, sort of Chelsea mix for third, fourth, fifth. Um, they, they've got a long way to go, I think, before they're going to be right at the top contending for the title again, which they haven't won for quite a while. Um, um, but I think the Gunners fans are definitely be more enthused this year than uh, than certainly what they produced in the, the the tail end of Wenger's reign. And obviously in the dying moments of the game, you mentioned Jefferson Lerma hit the post. It was nearly two and two, wasn't it? Oh, I mean there was nothing on. It was outrageous to really shoot from where he was. He was miles out. Loads of bodies between him and the goal, which actually possibly would have helped him because the goalkeeper was a bit unsighted. But sometimes those are the moments, you know. He just thought, Do you know what? And he probably was feeling bad having smashed in one of the own goals of the season uh, earlier on in the game. Um, that uh, he probably owed his teammates one and owed the fans one. But he was very, very close. But again, when things are working out for you, that bounces straight back to a Bournemouth player who taps it in. So uh, ambitious, but nearly proved uh, profitable. Well, after the last three games, Jefferson Lerma has been voted on Michael Matthews Player of the Month. And we'll be discussing his highlights in just a moment. But first, here they are for you. Well, there we go, a Player of the Month award for Jefferson Lerma. Chris, it's been a good month for him, hasn't it? I think that would be uh, one of the more obvious Player of the Month awards, I think. Um, I'd be surprised if he doesn't win a few more between now and the end of the season. Um, yeah, I, I, he's been fantastic. We've spoken about it many times already, that what he's added to the team, just something they didn't have. Um, he, the things we're noticing more and more, of we, we've seen his mobility and his, his physicality and uh, you know, he's not one of those who goes, you know, herring into outrageous two-footed challenges. But he, you know, he he he's just so mobile around the pitch. Um, he seems to read things. Uh, he always seems to pop up. It's like he's popping up out the ground at times. He's just there, uh, you know, getting a toe in. Um, sometimes, you know, covering for other people. Um, he makes mistakes himself, but often you'll see he's the one chasing back to get himself out of that particular sticky spot. Um, so a real blow that he won't be playing this weekend. Um, I guess it was a bit of a, the sort of challenge that you can see he's racked up a lot of yellow cards, just that sort of pull back on the halfway line against Arsenal, which is an obvious yellow card all day. So, um, yeah, you can see why he's racked up the amount of yellow cards he has. Um, it's more the sort of, I would say, technical niggly fouls rather than the outrageous, you know, bone crushes. Um, but he, you know, how Bournemouth cope with him in this game, I have to say I'm... We'll probably talk about this more later, but I'm more in the in the thought that it's probably not a bad game to miss him for this one because it's an uphill task anyway. So it's better to have him available for a game he can possibly have more impact on. Uh, I think of Liverpool here next weekend. You wouldn't want him suspended for that probably. So all in all, but a thoroughly deserving winner of the uh, the Michael Matthews Player of the Month for sure, um, and has ab absolutely added a different dimension. And I think he's been the key, as we've said before, to the successful start to the season. And it has been a tough month, but he has got off the mark with his first goal for the club against Newcastle. Yeah, and that was good to see. It was a shame he. he he only got to celebrate it for 30 seconds and then was off um, with that hamstring injury, which would have been a worry when he went off because 
the impact he's had. The last thing you want is to see him gone for six weeks with a hamstring. So um, the international break came at a good time for him, I think. Um, it's, it's confusing at the minute about the international situation with him because we haven't quite worked out whether Eddie Howe and the coaching staff have sort of requested that he's not picked by Colombia um, to, to go travelling around the world when he's just settled into life over here or whether he's just fallen off the end of the Colombia squad at the moment because he hasn't made the cut in their last couple. So that's an answer we haven't managed to get yet, but I think it's probably a good thing for Bournemouth that he's not jetting off to far-flung places in South and Central America to play in friendlies and things like that. So from that point of view, nice for him to get up and running. Goals are not, uh, not going to be an important part of his game in terms of um, what Bournemouth need from him. But if he is going to pop up, and it was a good header, by the way, at Newcastle, it was a great header, um, then a, a few more of those pot shots from 30 yards, that's probably the, the more likely times we'll see him scoring, I think. And so far this season, he's just getting better and better and better. We've got a big run of fixtures coming up. That's really important that he's in fine form for that, isn't it? Yeah, and I think he, I think the other the other central midfielders will profit from him as well because he just adds that bit of insurance, doesn't he? A little bit of, uh, you know, as I say, he pops up out of the ground at times. And, you know, for someone like Lewis Kirk or Dan Gosling or Andrew Sermon, if he plays, you know, those guys, they know that if, if they need a bit of help, then um, he, he can be there to, to bail them out. And he can probably get around a pitch a bit better than, with all due respect to Andrew Sermon, people like that these days. Um, Saying that, of course, the other he'll make mistakes as well, and he'll need his, his partners to get him out of trouble at times as well. But yeah, he's he's it's sort of it's Lerma plus one now, isn't it, in the central midfield? Um, Lewis Cook had the shirt. Dan Gosling had it back. Dan Gosling's an injury doubt for this weekend, so with Lerma suspended, central midfield is is uh, looking a bit of a worry away at City, which I think it would be a worry if you had your strongest midfield at City, let alone uh, sort of scrapping around to find a couple. So we'll see how that pans out. And we've got some experienced players in central midfield, as you say. That's really important, isn't it, for the likes of when Jefferson misses these games? Very important, yeah. You need your squad. And of course, you know, December 8 games, including the League Cup as well. So Eddie, I'm sure, will be wanting to sort of freshen it up a couple of times because we're we're getting to the stage of the season now where a lot of players have played a lot of games. I know there have been international breaks and things and, and you know the likes of David Brooks and people have, have been away playing every game. So I think we will start to see it mixed around and this is where you'll see people like Jordan Ive get more of a chance. Um, you'll see other, other players who have struggled for match minutes. Um, be needed and I think Jefferson Lerma is, is, is probably going to find himself playing most games I don't think he's going to be rotated too much um, but yeah he's, a, he's a, a key part of it well next up for the Cherries is a trip to the Etihad Stadium to face Manchester City let's look back at one of our finest goals against Pep Guardiola's side Gosling again And Charlie Daniels! Oh. That's fabulous! Oh. He'll be talking about that for a generation and more. That was a wonder strike. Well, a fine strike from Charlie Daniels there. Chris, it's certainly going to be an uphill task tomorrow, as you said. Would you say it's the toughest game of the season so far? I would say it's one of the toughest games in world football at the moment, let alone the toughest game this season. Uh, I think City are setting a new bar for the Premier League. It's very difficult to win the Premier League two seasons in a row. I mean, there's a long way to go, but you know, if anybody's having a fiver on it at the minute, I would say it's looking like it's going to be City again. Um, yeah, that Charlie Daniels goal, by the way, I mean, that's a, one of the high points. And that, that's, again, we talk about small margins against the big teams. Raheem Sterling, you know, 95th minute or whatever it was. I know he got sent off, which gave the Cherries fans a little bit of pleasure at the end. But um, that, that Charlie Daniels goal is one of only two goals Bournemouth have managed to score against Manchester City in the Premier League era. Uh, Glenn Murray was the other one for a little quiz question for you. Um, but when you look at the scores on paper, away at City, 5-1, 4-0, 4-0. Um, I just said to Eddie this morning, when you, when you look at those scores on paper, how do you give the players belief when you go into a place like this with City playing the way they have been? Um, you know, they've conceded, what is it, four goals in the whole season, I think, in the Premier League. So um, the one thing I will say is last year it was 2-0 until about, what, 15, 
10, 15 minutes to go. Cherry threw on a couple of attacking subs and tried to get something from the game and ended up losing 4-0. So that was probably a slightly falsely uh, decorated scoreline. But... Um, yeah, go in there. You need absolutely everything to go your way. You need City to have a bad day. I mean, Leon gave them one or two problems in midweek in the Champions League. You know, that City had to battle back and get a draw in that game. Um, I know they made a couple of changes, but you do need you do need a team of that quality to not be firing in all cylinders. Bournemouth could play out of their skin, but if City play out of their skin, Bournemouth will lose. Um, so that, that's the reality of it, unfortunately. So fans have to set the bar at the right level, I think, um, this weekend. The problem is that this is where the Newcastle defeat comes back a little bit to haunt them because all of a sudden you go in there having lost three in a row if you've got something at Newcastle then all of a sudden you know it doesn't you know because in all probability Bournemouth are big outsiders this weekend they could quite easily be four losses in a row going into Huddersfield Huddersfield have been playing pretty well all of a sudden for the last couple of weeks then it's Liverpool next weekend so this is a tough little trot so you've got to pick up bits and bobs where you can um, but getting back on topic and I noticed you've given me the Manchester City microphone today by the way as well um, yeah it's I would say it's the toughest test probably in world football at the moment anyhow likened it to go into Barcelona um, that's what the Cherries are up against this weekend. And you mentioned the Leon game for Manchester City in the week. Will they be at all fatigued from that going into the game? Well, it was Tuesday, wasn't it? So uh, uh, the players uh, these days, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, of course, you know, Bournemouth will be better rested, but I think the professionals recover um, a lot better these days. So, uh, yeah, and it wasn't too far to travel. It wasn't like Arsenal who had to go to Ukraine having been here. Um, so I think from that point of view, I think maybe you know, they might be slightly bruised because not many teams have, have stopped Manchester City this season, but Leon have stopped them twice. Um, um, Leon, the only team to go to City and win this season. Uh, the only Premier League games they haven't won, City have been away at Wolves and away at Liverpool. So um, at home, they've been rampant. They've scored six a couple of times, put six past Southampton a couple of weeks ago. I think they've scored five twice as well at home. So from that point of view, um, yeah, it's, 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 I'm trying to find some positives. <laughs> and this is normally the part of the show where we look out for the other team's danger men, but they're <laughs> dotted all over the pitch this week, aren't they? We're going to talk about who not to look out for. Um, yeah, I mean, Aguero, Premier League top scorer. Uh, I mean, Sterling's the man who, you know, we talked about Lukaku before um, when Bournemouth have played United about always having a good game against Bournemouth. Raheem Sterling has scored in five Premier League games in a row against uh, Bournemouth for City. Uh, he also scored a couple for Liverpool uh, in his days there as well. So he's been a, a slippery eel for the Cherries to get hold of. Um, he played in central midfield, actually, in the, in the Champions League in midweek. So it'll be interesting to see if Pep Guardiola maintains that because they've got some injury problems in, in central midfield like Bournemouth have as well. So um, from that point of view, we'll see where Sterling plays. But... Yeah, Aguero, you know, Sterling, David Silva scored, I think, in three consecutive games as well. Um, you're looking at their big players, you know, Mares, even, a, you know, he's probably one of the, the lesser players in inverted commas, and he was what 50 million pounds in in January. Even people like Kyle Walker, you know, they're 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 just they're just unbelievable players. Um, Laporte, who they brought in uh, the back end of uh, last season, who again has, has inked his place in the team as well. So uh, all over the pitch, you're looking at quality. They've got a goalkeeper who's very hard to get past as well. Um, but those players can't have a great day every day of the season. So if we're looking for some chinks, let's hope that Aguero is a bit tired. And another positive, of course, is that Kevin De Bruyne is going to miss the game, as is Benjamin Mendy. So that's that's something positive. Looking yeah, the today. problem <laughs> problem is when you've got a squad like City, should you lose a couple of players like that? You've got some fifty million pound players to bring in, in in response. But yeah, Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, he's another one who's often makes the game look so easy and has, has absolutely run the show in Bournemouth uh, City fixtures in the past. So, yeah, it's a shame for him, but he's going to be another four or six weeks, I think. Benjamin Mendy's, uh, you know, poof, what, a, what a powerful uh, player he is down the, down the left-hand side. So, again, great to, great to see him not in the team, if you like, but, you know, they've got very capable replacements, even great players that can't even get in the team. So, uh, from that point of view, two big players missing, but two big ones will come in and replace them. And of course, the Cherry's got some injury concerns of their own. Adam Smith's obviously going to be out, and Eddie <coughs> mentioned Dan Gosling as well. Yeah, Dan Gosling's not looking too good. I think he's, uh, he hasn't trained this week, Eddie said. So um, uh, he picked up a knock on his knee in the Arsenal game, which again, it never rains, it pours, does it? With Lerma suspended, and all of a sudden Dan Gosling could be out. So maybe by you know by uh, default, it could be a Lewis Cook sermon midfield. Um, if I was a betting man, having seen Dan Gosling this morning, I would say that possibly that may be how it's looking at the moment. Um, Eddie Howe did also mention another couple of niggles knocking around the squad but was uh, didn't want to necessarily say what they were um, so yeah interesting to see which way they go they've gone three at the back away from home in big games before um, and he said you know he's been he's been trying to concentrate as much on what they do rather than what City's dangers are which you know you can sometimes overload the players and frighten the players with this is how good they are by the way here's a million powerpoints about it um, so from that point of view I th it, we'll wait and see which way he goes um, but 
I think they have to go with a certain element of their normal, you know, attacking game. Um, it, it might be basketball style. It, it might end up 6-3. Who knows? But if Bournemouth can function away from home as they have done this season in some games if they can get that fluidity going I think having Joshua King available for this game having come through last week with no problems is is big because his physicality just being able to hold the ball up giving the cherries an outlet not being so reliant on Callum Wilson to have to do all the chasing up front do all the physical workload I think having King as an extra pair of hands if you like I think that is very important just to take a bit of sting out of City sometimes be able to have a bit of possession uh, I think Bournemouth had 21% of possession up there last year so they may not spend a lot of time with the ball so when they have got the ball they've got to make sure they use it effectively. Well it's certainly going to be a very tough test if you are going to Manchester City this weekend have a very safe journey we'll be back on Monday to preview the game against Huddersfield Town here at Vitality Stadium thanks for joining us.